then a lot of people were really kicking off about it here in the UK and it was going around the world too and I thought wow okay well this is clearly something more than just a flipping um, you know tweet about a virus. Hello folks, welcome to another Gavin's Good News Vlog. This is the show all about the news that I've seen throughout the week, which I think has been interesting, inspiring or entertaining, which hopefully uh, you may feel the same about. I would love you to have a, a watch and subscribe if you like anything that you see here. I've got a really random rash on my wrist. Um, yeah, I think it's caused from some MRI dye agent, which I had uh, for an MRI scan on my finger. Look at the finger here, crazy. Um, right, so yes, do subscribe, like, comment, do all the usual mumbo jumbo. So today we are cracking on with the first story of the day and it's all about the Proud Boys. So the Proud Boys, I don't know if you've heard of them before, you might have heard Donald Trump mention them recently at a rally. Um, not at a rally, I beg your pardon, at a debate. Uh, in the first debate with Joe Biden, he, he said about the Proud Boys to stand down and stand by, uh, which could have a whole host of interpretations, but effectively a lot of people saying it was the call for the far right to get ready in case he doesn't win the election. There's been a gay movement to effectively take over the, the term Proud Boys. Um, really interesting. It's kind of, I guess, nullified their message online and on social media. Um, the hashtag Proud Boys now is being used by lots of men putting up their um, photos of them kissing, showcasing their, you know, um, pride in their homosexuality and pride in their, their, you know, their, their love of each other, and effectively quelling this message which they, which they feel has uh, sprung up out of nowhere and become a more of a prominent thing now that Trump has mentioned them. It all started by former Star Trek actor George Takai who challenged his Twitter followers, uh, who has challenged his gay Twitter followers to post pictures of themselves uh, with the hashtag Proud Boys and seeing how that resonated really. So some members of the uh, Proud Boys um, group, if you like, have said that uh, it doesn't bother them all this, they're not homophobic. Um, and that it has no bearing on what they're doing and what they're all about. So yeah, just putting it out there, they're not homophobic apparently. Um, so there we are. What do you think about this story? Do you think it's a, a fun movement, an interesting movement? Love your thoughts. <laughs> Now next up we are talking about uh, this hashtag that is going around at the moment called End SARS. When I first heard the term End SARS on social I saw it spreading rapidly, it's going viral all around the world. Um, I thought it was to do with frickin' coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, which is what uh, the technical term for coronavirus, the current coronavirus pandemic is all about. Then a lot of people were really kicking off about it here in the UK and it was going around the world too and I thought wow okay well this is clearly something more than just a flipping um, you know, tweet about a virus. So effectively what it is, is it's the, the, the people in the country there want to end the serious anti-robbery squad, which is what SARS stands for there, um, because they feel it has uh, effectively been br brutalizing the population and, and brutalizing young people particularly and ruining their lives, uh, putting, throwing people in jail, um, arresting them for, for nothing. Um, and then, you know, there's been a huge motion of protest. We're here because we believe in what we're fighting for. We are, we are firm to it. And you know, if you listen to our national anthem and our national pledge, we are here to defend our unity. We are fighting for the truth. We are fighting for the labor of our heroes' past. We don't want it to be in vain. I would prefer to die well for my children to have a better tomorrow. And what we've seen over the last uh, few days is that um, there's been a lot of peaceful demonstrations, a lot of peaceful protests. Um, and the government, effectively, who have run the SARS campaign have allegedly been uh, killing some of these protesters, which is absolutely horrific. And the International are saying that, you know, dozens of protesters have been killed. They, what, what apparently they're doing is that they were targeting young, affluent, successful um, young people in the country who, you know, drive, in, like, drive nice cars and wear nice clothes and effectively targeting targeting the younger generation. This SARS uh, squad, if you like, this, this SARS unit has been around for um, for quite a while, uh, for, for, for many years, and only now it seems to be uh, being dealt with because of the attention and the, and the light that, you know, we've we've seen being put onto it by the, the wave of protests around the world. And, I mean, they have disbanded the union now, they've officially, they've officially ended it, but have started a new thing called SWAT, which is Special Weapons and um, Tactics, which is effectively uh, another another name for what the same squad could be apparently. A lot of people are saying it's the same teams of police 
same teams of, um, of, of these units that have gone into the new SWAT team. So yeah, this, this all started when uh, a video circulated around a couple of weeks ago or so of um, a, a man who um, was apparently being beaten up by um, this SARS squad. Um, and it's proving to be the biggest test for Mohamed Buhari, the president there, uh, of his, his time in office. He's been there for several years now. This um, is potentially going to be um, a real reckoning for him and a real reckoning for the country. It's Ni Nigeria is Africa's most populous country. You know, a lot of wealth there, a lot of poverty there. The average age, I think, uh, of, of people there is very, very young, below 20 for the, for the, for the population as a whole, so it's a young nation. Uh, and if they're being victimized and bullied like this effectively and, and silenced, um, then it's, not, it's, it's just not how 21st century democracy works. Uh, we've seen what happened with George Floyd in America. We've seen you know, what happens when you um, abuse power and abuse uh, your trust in the people, what can happen. And this is effectively what is going on right there now. You know, people are revolting. People are, uh, are up in arms about what's happening. Next up, we are talking about pay-per-view football games. So recently, the Premier League have introduced pay-per-view football games, £15 a pop uh, for games that are not showing on the regular subscription, the big games that they already had planned. Newcastle United have, um, have, their fans have done something incredible, I think. They were refusing to pay the £15 fee, which is a lot of money in many people's eyes, a lot of money for people who are, you know, everyone's struggling at the moment, aren't they? Let's be honest. Some fans there have spent decided to spend the money that they would pay for the pay-per-view and donate that money to a food bank in the area, £19,000, which is just absolutely incredible. You know, it shows that um, they would rather put their money towards something that is going to have some use for uh, people of the city. It's going to be great for people to have this extra uh, money towards going towards their food because at the moment there's going to be a lot of people uh, who are struggling to put uh, food on the table for their families. So incredible act of generosity and, and also an incredible two fingers up effectively to, um, to the administrators of, of football who are putting these games on. Should they be putting on for free? That's an interesting question. Can they justify that? Because it is a business at the end of the day and if you are having to spend you know, hundreds of thousands of pounds effectively to put a game on, if you encompass everything around it, then should you be trying to recoup some of that back by, via these costs? So I can kind of understand um, why they would do that and you know why they would try and get some money back for the cost it, it is to put these games on without any other sources of, of money coming in. Now next up we have this story about Sana Marin, who is the 34-year-old Prime Minister of Finland. Um, she's 34, ridiculous for a Prime Minister. Um, they are getting younger. Uh, well, maybe it's just me noticing my age now and, you know, oh, goodness me. Whole other topic there. But um, this is great because um, she's provoked a huge debate in uh, Finland and in the international media about her, her clothing and her attire in an interview recently. Um, she wore uh, a blazer with nothing underneath. So it was pretty uh, provocative and, and quite sexy, to be honest. Um, and she's been getting a lot of flack from people saying that it was inappropriate and um, the pictures you can see them now let me know what you think about the pictures but she's basically stated her case for saying that she does interviews this this interview took place in a magazine called trendy which looks a bit like vogue um, l some of the high-end magazines you might know of um, but this one looks like uh, it's you know it looks very tasteful it looks uh, very curated it looks incredibly well managed and well done um, and classic and she says that she talks about policies and her family life and She's very big on gender equality. It just goes to show that, you know, people judge men and women so differently, don't they? You know, there's been a lot of people saying, uh, you know, de defending her, saying, look at what Vladimir Putin does, you know, posing with his top off all the time. There was a blogger that said that it was all very um, attention seeking. And so I would love to know what you think. Do you think it was attention seeking? I think to tell you something, it's, it's drawn attention to her policies, that's for sure. Um, I, can you imagine any other female world leader doing that? Maybe Angela Merkel doing that. Um, uh, Jacinda Ardern in New Zealand, perhaps. Don't know, very risque, isn't it? Very risque, be frowned upon here. Could you think Theresa May would have done that when she was Prime Minister? Doubt it, somehow. Uh, I suppose it just, I think it's just a liberated way of thinking, isn't it? 
So yes, this is the end of the show. Thanks so much indeed for being with us. This has been Gavin's Good News Vlog, aka my Good News Vlog. Um, I am not gonna be referring to myself in the third person again because I frigging hate that. So that's the last time I ever do that. So yes, do get, leave a like, do hit us with a comment below and uh, subscribe as well if you can too. That would be much, much appreciated. Hope you've uh, enjoyed what you've seen here. Um, and yeah, I'd love to know what you have, what has interested you throughout the week and what has interested you recently. So please do let me know. Uh, DM me as well on all the social channels. Uh, and yeah, subscribe as well. Did I say that already? I can't remember if I said that or not. But yeah, subscribe. Thanks so much again. I will see you soon. Have a great day.